The following is a presentation of the Chicago Bears Network and ChicagoBears.com. Download the Chicago Bears official mobile app for up-to-the-minute Bears content every day. And now, welcome to Bears All Access, your all-access pass into Chicago Bears football. Bears All Access is brought to you by IGS Energy and sponsored by Athletico Physical Therapy and CDW. Show ahead tonight here on Bears All Access. Good to be with you once again as we are each and every week here on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score we're brought to you by IGS Energy. My name is Jeff Joniak, my broadcast partner, the Super Bowl Bear, Mr. Tom Thayer, uh, wearing the light clothing over there in Maui. Uh, I understand you're a little bit on edge, though, because the, the news side of me quickly got on the phone because there was an earthquake uh, off the coast in New Zealand. And every time that happens in your neck of the world, you start worrying about tsunamis and sure enough there were tsunami watches so we all good are we gonna be able to make it through the show yeah i, th- I think we will but it's a real and, an, and it's an instant uh, or, i mean an honest kind of a way of life out here because i've been out here now for a couple of tsunami warnings and when you have a chance that it really does affect the island you're on you can see the rise and fall of the ocean right before mm. your eyes so um it's it is scary i people do start getting prepared for it but because of the warning system within the south pacific they have a good uh, ability to judge what could possibly happen or what won't happen and so i hopefully they're standing down by now right well yeah, i'd imagine the chatter with uh, with all you and your friends and uh, i know you got you guys like getting out on the water and surfing it becomes a big conversation it does but it, you know it's I don't know. You know, it's just something that's nice like we have in the Midwest, the warning system of the storms that are coming through, and preparation is the key to it. So, uh, again, I think everything's going to be safe out here, but it is it is a reality, you know. All right, big time. Coming up on our show, we've got our old friend Israel Adonage joining the program, coming up at 6.08. And at the bottom of the hour, we'll spend a few minutes with Bears general manager Ryan Pace. Tommy, obviously we heard uh, both Ryan and Matt Nagy earlier this week. A couple of days ago, uh, going through the off season, you know, it's 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 the way it is. It's it's the combine uh, without the combine interviews with the coaches and general managers. So they're not going to talk a lot about any individual players or scheme or it's never going to happen. Uh, in in rare case, cases, do they do? So a lot of time for all those decisions to be made, but they keep it close to the best. But was there anything from the two of them that stood out to you about what the plan might be here in the off season? still think there's a lot of uncertainty about the plan. I think the certainty is, though, they got the coaching staff in place. And I think that's one of the first things they needed to do. Because of all the coaching staff movements around the league, that they had to get things settled. And they have a plan in place. And I, I think that's the good thing for a majority of the players that have been here and that will be here. And I think when you start formulating a plan amongst the coaches up in the offense and defensive coaching rooms, you got to become familiar with each other before you're going to really have the ability to teach uh, whatever you're teaching to the new guys, whatever the new coaches are teaching to the guys. So uh, that that's where they're at right now. But, you know, I, to me it was more of a reminder that reality's coming a little bit closer each day. Because when we were doing all access after the season, it was almost talking fantasy football. It was so far out there, all these forms and all these rumors were starting. But then each week you start chipping away a little bit of that big block of ice to see what's really going to happen. What's going to happen with free agency? What's going to happen with the salary cap ramifications? What's going to happen with some veterans that have experience and you would like to investigate their talent, where they're going to want to go? Because nowadays, uh, which I appreciate by the players, is they do have an opinion of where they want to go, what type of system they want to be a part of what type of scheme they want to be, you know, to be exposed to. So there's a lot of things that it, it, the information comes week in and week, day in and day out, and this and this season clicks a little closer week in and week out. Well, that's why fans love it. It's uh, it's definitely it's, – it's not fantasy football, but you start to wander a little bit about what you'd like to see on your own team. Uh, you mentioned the coaches. This was Matt Nagy. No, there's not. I mean – you know, the, the one with Vic is, you know, uncontrollable. He, he, he goes ahead and, you know, gets that, that head job in, in Denver. And so that's that. And then you have another one where it's retirement, you know what I mean? So that's just that part. Uh, 
And then I do think offensively for us heading into this second year together, man, I can't even begin to tell you how much easier it is going into uh, watching the film right now in the morning together and just everybody knowing it and not have to having to have to reteach things, you know? So now for Sean, uh, it's been very important. And, and I, I love this. It's been very important that really all of us are, are in the building together uh, all by the rules and, and all, all by the protocol, but being there um, as much as we love doing these zoom interviews and these zoom talks, they're, they're, they're good, but it's just different when you're in the building. It's different when you're together. And that's kind of the direction that, that we're going right now. And I think for Sean now, getting back to what he wants and some of these, because that is, you know, a lot of new guys on that side, they're able to kind of really feel who each other is, their personalities, um, have ideas and not have to click the mute button every time they want to talk. So that part's been good. And then offensively, I feel like we're a step ahead. Um, just because we have Bill Lazor and now Flip has had the quarterbacks and our other coaches, they're heading into their fourth year. So I really feel good with where we're at. Now we got to put it all together. We just got to see where the offseason goes. And they have scheme evaluations going on right now. That's part of the big part of the uh, offseason as they get that going. And then uh, the other side of it is player personnel. Hey, Tom, we're going to go to Israel to Danage a bit early here. So we'll bring in our old friend, the former Bears defensive lineman, and uh, such a major part of the city of Chicago, what he's working on philanthropically, professionally, uh, you name it. He's got it going on. Izzy, how you doing, my brother? Jeff, what's up, buddy? Good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us tonight. You're with Tom and I here on Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy. You know, first thing I want to talk about is, because I've had a chance the last couple of days to, to visit with a couple of your old teammates, Rashid Davis and Jason McKee. And mm-hmm. every now and then, when you get into conversations about that 06 team, and you really start to think about the quality of players on that team, up and down yeah. that roster, that was one heck of a team. They were almost all those guys could play. It is not just guys just hanging out at the bottom of the roster. Do you ever sit back and think about just how good that team really was? Yeah, I mean, especially when we get together, right? We we while you're in it, you never you don't quite understand or you don't quite know how special what you have, you know, what it what how unique it really is, right? And now that we're you know a number of years removed for that season, it was to look back, it was pretty incredible. It was pretty special. The talent we had, the bond that we had, the the way that we played together. It was uh, it was unique, right? And and I actually didn't even realize that till when I left Chicago. I went to Detroit for one year, and actually went back to New York. It's just different, right? These it's just what we had was on a whole nother level, and and it's hard to replicate every club, every coaching, you know, group of coaches, every team, you know, managers. Everybody's trying to find a way to bring that culture, that chemistry, that energy to the club, and uh, we were fortunate to have it. Well, and you know what? Uh, you could have been a Buffalo Bill that year and missed the whole boat because right. they did sign you to an offer sheet and the Bears matched it. Right. Do you remember that whole process? Right. And yeah, w- yeah. What, that, was it a real thing that maybe you would have, you know, gone to Buffalo? I, absolutely. I, I, I flew down to Buffalo. Uh, I, I had a, spent way more time there than I anticipated. And uh, then they called me into the office and they made me an offer right there on the spot to become a Bill and have an opportunity you know, to, to, to really contribute and, and, and be a part of what they were building there defensively. And, you know, I had a tremendous amount of love for, for Jerry Angelo. So I, I stepped outside. I called, actually called Jerry and, you know, I just wanted to chatted with him on what was going on. And he said, Hey, Izzy, if, if, if you want to go to Buffalo and start and have an opportunity to start and, you know, by all means, you know, we won't match the offer. But if you want to become a Chicago, if you want to stay a Chicago Bear, if you, you know, think that, you know, we um, are a fit for you, you know, as you know, we love you, we have a plan for you, you know, I'll match that offer. And uh, he had seven days to match. I told him, you know, I'll, uh, you know, yeah, I'd stay in Chicago. And, and you know, it, it worked out just incredibly for for the next few years. I mean, and, and ending up being here, you know, uh, 10 years plus, it was, it was pretty special. Hey, Izzy, when you look back on it all and all the success you've had in sports, because you changed your body style, you changed your career, you moved around positions, you did things that is not really expected of a guy your size, like your kickoff coverage ability and stuff. What's the most common trait 
between sports and business success? What's the one thing that you need in both? Well, I would say the number one, I guess, yeah, trade or, or just skill set that really correlates between both sport and business is just perseverance, right? It's just you've, you've got to be able to continue to work and grind and just, you know, continuing to, to, to pay that price to do what's necessary and, and knowing that eventually the outcome is going to happen, right? Especially when you're talking about startups as, as an entrepreneur, you know, it's a, that work ethic and that perseverance are, are two, you know, two skills that you must have, especially at, at to play elite at an elite level of football, like the NFL, you know, every year I was there, they brought in a new starter. They brought in you guys. They were trying to replace me every year, especially towards the end there. You know, they're bringing in really young, talented guys and you had to just continue to work grind, especially the, the, in the off season. The, the easy part is on Sunday, right? The, the real work is, preparing the body, preparing the mind, and and then continuing to work when there were setbacks, right? When, hey, Corey Wooten's going to start this week, right? I'm like, man, Corey Wooten's going to start, right? <laughs> Except it doesn't matter. You show up, you keep working, and you support the guys around you. That's the same in, in, in life as an entrepreneur. You just keep working and grinding. you got to be able to pivot, change. You know, Izzy wants you to play three technique. The next year, you're back to, to you know, end, and then you're playing nose. We want you to, you know, play just kick kickoff or or um kickoff return you know it's just it's it's trying to consistently find value well, you know, one thing about it too izzy is the the part of the success you've had is um you physically you could always go the next day and you could prove yourself every day on the practice field every day on the game field how do you – what advice would you give to me or anybody else who played football, a physical sport their whole life, but now they have to go and prove their self mentally on a regular basis? How do you make that uh, transition? Well, it, there's just – there's no I'm, – I'm just a really strong believer that there's no magic, right? There's no magic button or no wand to wave, right? It's just about the commitment, right? No, not, not about emotions, not about how you feel. It's about making that commitment to yourself, that you're going to do what's necessary, right? And at the beginning of that journey, it's hard, right? To get up, to just continue to grind, to work, to learn, to, to just be intentional about learning, educating yourself, win or lose, right? You make a mistake, you, you, you get up and you do it again, you do it again. And with that commitment and that repetition of continuing to do it, eventually that becomes your habit, right? That becomes your mindset. It's just ingrained in you, but it's, it's a process, right? At first it's like work, it's hard, it's challenging. You don't know if you can continue, right? It's, you know, you're, you're doing things that aren't, are, aren't comfortable, right? Getting out of that, you got to get out of that comfort zone and that re repetition due to that commitment makes that mindset. It locks it in place. It makes that, that thing that you've been doing over, it turns it into just like, your your reaction right you're not thinking about it it's just how you wake up and how you function and 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 it starts with just that commitment regardless of external circumstance that you're going to show up you're going to do what's necessary you're going to put into work israel donage our guest here on bears all access here on chicago sports radio 670 the score i got knocked off the air so i don't know exactly what question you asked in big town but uh let's uh, dive into uh what you got going on in the south loop right now uh, restore Jim, the RSTR. And I heard you, uh, you're, uh, like, uh, what a third of the man you used to be. <laughs> I wish, you know, I've, I've lost what 70, 80 pounds. You know, Holy we opened smokes. up a, yeah, a boutique fitness studio here in the South loop and, and, you know, ultimately just to help people transform their bodies. Right. And, and, you know, as you know, transforming the body, it really starts with the transformation of the mind, how you think, how you prepare, how you work. So, Hey, you can I interrupt you? Why would you yeah, say, as I know? What do I know about transforming a body? I've been the same short, <laughs> stubby guy for as long as I've been alive. <laughs> no, come on, come on. Listen, the last time I saw you, you were looking lean and mean. You were looking good now. Uh, I interrupted yeah. you, so keep going. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. So, so, so um, you know, to, to be able to lead others in that journey – you know, you got to be right yourself. So I just, I just, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, I made this commitment to continue or just to start to like sharpen my weapon and get my body back in, in fighting shape. And so I could just be a, a better leader in the process of leading our members uh, to achieve their vision for what they wanted to look like physically. And these are half hour workouts. 30 minute workouts. Yeah. And that's when we began, when we first opened, I just really felt like the future of fitness was, 
was going to be these 30-minute workouts and that you could transform your body with just a commitment to 30-minute workouts, you know, four days, five days a week, really specified on, on building muscle on the body, legs, back, chest, arms, right? And then with some nutrition added to that, you can really move the needle and start to see your body change. You know, Israel, our, we spent our whole life trying to be stronger the next day than they were than we were the day before. When you talk about the stages of the bodies that we go through after our career is over, is this a, is this a low impact type of workout, or is it a is it a, a workout that you are going to raise your heart rate to the extreme and you know push yourself to the type of exhaustion? that you faced on the football field, whether a hot training camp practice or even a conditioning session? Yeah, it, it, it is low impact, but high intensity, right? So you are going to get your heart rate up. We, we have an assault bike and, you know, everybody, you're going to ride the assault bike. You're going to drive for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and then go straight into mountain climbers or other movements. So your heart rate is going to, is, we're going to drive it hard. You're going to have short work windows, but the beauty of it is, like, it, we want to meet you where you are, right? So you push hard, as hard as you can. And, you know, if you need to slow down, slow down, right? Whenever you're ready to get back into it, get back into it. But what you find is just gradually continuing to push your limit. You go a little bit longer the next week. You go a little bit longer the next week. And before you know it, you know, you can ride the full 60 seconds. You can do the full workout. Uh, but, you know, we wanted to build something that was low impact. You know, I, I had a serious uh, right knee injury throughout my career. And, you know, I didn't want to do a workout that every time I finished a class, my right knee was just torn up and, you know, inflamed and swollen. So, you know, that was like the base of where we started. Anybody, we have a member that's 74 years old, right? She does the same workout everybody else does, but at her level. And we wanted to make sure it was something that could meet everybody where they were at, whether a lead athlete or someone just getting started. You know, Israel Adanje, when you get to meet a lot of your people, you're always so well dressed. You present yourself in a in a suit. So I, I I'm just saying the way you look, your appearance. And then sometimes, you know, are people more interested in the Israel Adanje of old, the, the professional athlete Israel Adanje, or Israel Adanje, the businessman, and the impact you're having, you know, all over the business world right now. Well, I mean, it, it all depends, you know, on kind of where we are or where I am and, or the circle. I will say it, it's even all these years of being removed from the game. You know, I retired officially 2014 or 2015 officially. And just the love that I'm fortunate to still get in the city. And, and when I travel, it's uh, it's pretty special. And I'm just thankful to, to have been a part of the club for so many years, you know, 10 seasons in, in Chicago. And, and so when any time I get, you know, love for, from that chapter of my life, it's, it's just special. I really just appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to our fans because if not for them, you know, we don't have the fortune to do what we do day in and day out. Um, and then for the work we do in the community, whether it's, you know, with the, with the schools or with, you know, the officers or, or any of the initiatives that we, we run, you know, um, the support that I get there as well is incredible, but I always have to press the point that when it comes to like impact work and the work we're doing in Chicago, I'm, I'm, I'm a very small part of that team. I'm fortunate to be just, uh, again, on a team where everybody's bringing their best to like solve some major issues in our city. And, you know, I'm fortunate that I, I had this platform called the NFL and, you know, this platform of being a Chicago bear and that I can bring that to the table and hopefully create some value so we can drive awareness to these initi initiatives that we're, we're trying to basically end or solve for, for the city of Chicago. All right, we're going to let you go. But before we do, uh, I understand you now are a franchise co-owner as well. Congratulations. <laughs> as, uh, you. One of the owners Thank of the you. Chicago Red Stars. Red uh, Coast you know, Red Stars. Yeah, uh, <laughs> touch on that quickly. And uh, how exciting is that? No, it's, it's really special. You know, as you know, Chicago is a sports city, you know, from the top to bottom. And, you know, to, you know, while I played, actually, I, I, I didn't know much about you know, the Red Stars, right? And, and, and to have this incredible group of athletes right here in our city uh, that are, are just legendary in this league that we're in, um, the NWSL, 
And now to be able to, to be a part of an ownership group that's working to take this team and really the league to the next level, it, it's pretty special, right? We have some great players. We have some incredible talent. And the awareness of, of our club and what we've done, the history of the club and what we're about to do, that's what I'm really excited about sharing with the Chicago fans, with the community, and just getting people out when we can. Obviously, when the world gets back to, to some normalcy, get more people out to those games. All right, Israel, appreciate you coming on. Uh, everything you touch turns to gold. So, And get double A in that gym of yours, will you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's been working hard, man. He's been working yes, hard on that, yes, on, that on that heavy bag. So, Yeah, he's doing – I mean, he's lost a ton of weight, too. He's doing a great job. <laughs> yes, he has. All right, come on again and talk to us, will you? Appreciate it. All right, fellas, appreciate you. Take care. Hey, Israel Donage. 6'6", 275 when he started, and who knows what weights he played at over the course of his career, but a long career and a very good one as well, 29 career sacks. Going to take a break. Our first one tonight here at Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio, 670 The Score. Hey everybody, Jeff and Tom back with you on Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy. Choose clean energy for your home at IGS.com because every good choice adds up to a better world. Uh, you know, we just finished talking to Israel Donaghy coming up at the bottom of the hour. Bears general manager Ryan Pace for about 10 minutes to join us as well. You know, the, I, I keep talking about this. Tw- it's going to be 15-year anniversary of that 2006 team. Unfortunately, they did not win the Super Bowl. But, you know, you think about the stars on that team and you think about what it takes to get to a Super Bowl. It also takes the collective group of role players. And if you really think about a, a lot of those guys – were tremendous football players, some of whom went on to win Super Bowls with other franchises. And the guys that come to mind are like Brendan Iambadejo and Corey Graham, uh, Adrian Peterson, probably an underrated aspect. Uh, you think about, I was just talking with Olin Krutz the other day, about Alfonso Boone. I mean, all these guys that were considered, you know, nice players, but in the collective view afterwards, 15 years later, you look, boy, almost every player on that defense was a name player. Offensively, yeah, that offensive you know, they, line, they, they, name players. When I see some of those guys, because we go out, we, we watch them every single day. We watch them from the beginning of training camp to the end of the season. And sometimes they achieve higher expectations that I, I or we have set up for them, and some of them don't achieve what we hope they would because we see glimpses of greatness, whether it's in a game or in a practice. And that's one of the things about a guy like Izzy Adonage is he was a great athlete. He didn't have a lot of notoriety coming in. He was willing to do every single thing that was asked of him from losing extreme amounts of weight to gaining extreme amounts of weights to playing a more physical version of his position than play of on the outside covering kickoffs the destructive force he was on that and you know you see some of these guys and what they're able to mold and build themselves into you kind of get an indication why they're so successful when they leave the sport and in israel donage is a great example of that they have a lot of other guys great well, guys on that team great personalities I, I think it's worth celebrating that this this journey that they all took and, and what they've done after their careers you know, you talk about Israel, but you, you can also talk about a number of players. They stayed in the Chicago area. They like being here, like being a part still of the Bears organization. You got, you know, Jason and Rashid coaching over at Carmel uh, High School out in Mundelein now part, giving back a little bit to these kids about what it takes to be a, a professional and wh- how go about the pro- process of being a good football player and a good student. Uh, and, and on and on and on. We could go on and on and on. But there's, there's a lot of great stories yet to be told. I, because I, I every day, you know, and Dan Pompey's been writing stories about some of your old teammates and things I've never heard of before, which obviously you've heard all of them because you lived it. But there's always something that you, you never knew before. And that's what I love about learning about this stuff. Right. And, you know, the more modern day, modern day guys that we get to know because, you know, the 85 Bears, you know, they are a team of, of so long ago, the accomplishments of some of the young guys that you're talking about because there's other ex-members of Bears that are coaching college programs and high school programs around the country and everything that they've invested in themselves, they're able to pay it forward to the young guys and the young girls that they're coaching in their sports of choice. And I think it's cool for Israel Adonage to get involved in the, um, the soccer team in Chicago because 
I'm telling you, it's, it has an impact in the area, and the success of that team impacts the surrounding communities of the stadium and wherever people come from to, to watch it. So I, I, th- I think it's a pretty, cool, a pretty cool endeavor that Israel's taken on. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, by the way, uh, Jimmy Graham tweeting today that uh, he wanted to get ahead of it a little bit, but uh, he's okay. He was in an accident this morning down in Miami trying to avoid a disabled vehicle in the center lane. His car rolled over but walked away unscathed he said uh, in one word simple tom blessings and yes he is fortunate and lucky so yeah no doubt about it i'm, I'm happy for him yes. all right coming up ryan pace bears general manager to join us here at the bottom of the hour this is bears all access on chicago sports radio 670 the score welcome back to bears all access brought to you by igs energy with tom there i'm jeff joniak good to have you alongside along with adam Stazinski, our producer and time now to welcome in Bears general manager Ryan Pace taking time out of what is a extraordinarily busy time of year. Joined the uh, the Zoom crowd earlier this week along with Bears head coach Matt Nagy to get us up to date on some things going on in the offseason. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm good, guys. How are you guys doing? Doing okay. You know, some are better than others because Tom's in Maui. So, you know, he, he's enjoying the sunshine. So maybe we should rattle his cage a little bit, Ryan. You know, we're, we're, we're over here grinding and he's on vacation. <laughs> Get any surfing in, Tom? As much as I can, Ryan. That's that's the reason I'm here is just to take advantage of the surf out here and some of the the nice weather. I do feel guilty when I see the daily weather reports throughout the month of February and see what everybody, including my family, is struggling through. But uh, I think surfing has taken an important role in my life, and it keeps it going. Yeah, one day he'll invite us out there, Ryan. For sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, this time of year is, is is a challenging one for general managers and head coaches. This would be ordinarily be the you know right around the combine time or after the combine, but all, all the teams uh, get in front of the media and, and they get, ask a lot of questions about things that you're not going to answer, and that's about personnel decisions that you plan on making in free agency, trades, draft, whatever. So it's it's very interesting to to try and piece together then what the plan might be and so it's something you acknowledge but is it hard to answer questions this time of year yeah def it is because you know you, you want to answer the questions and you, and you, and you want to be forthright but it's it's hard because it's competitive you know and everybody's listening to what everybody's saying right now and trying to read between the lines so you just got to be careful with it but I, but i understand it and uh you know it's part it's part of this time of year um but, you know, we got a lot of big decisions coming up, and, and we're, we're all in the office now. It's good to be in here. You know, this time last year, we were all kind of, you know, getting kicked out of the office. So it's all it's good to be in here with the coaches and just going through uh, all our preparation. I, I want to take you back to the Super Bowl, actually, because with Tom Brady uh, winning the MVP for Tampa Bay, winning a Super Bowl, but the defense easily as a unit could have won the MVP of that uh, Super Bowl because of what they did to an outstanding offense in Kansas City. Do you look at that at all when you go about now, okay, where does this franchise have to get to in terms of style and so forth? Because it is a sum of the parts. It's not necessarily, yes, the quarterback position is ultra important. Everyone gets fixated on it. You do as well as a general manager. But is leveraging the importance of what's happening around the quarterback equally important and maybe overlooked in many respects because this week and the next week everybody's going to still be talking about the quarterback but it's what's going to happen around these other franchises and and what's put around the quarterback offensively or defensively yeah you know I think there's something to that Jeff and when you watch that that defense um, you know with Todd Bowles as they got rolling it got better and better as the year progressed the, the Tampa defense and you know there's a lot of there's a lot of good draft picks on there Jason Light did a good job and and you kind of saw it all come to head uh, in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl. And, you know, I think you look at our defense and a lot of the young talent with, you know, I, you can go on with with Blau and Eddie Goldman coming back and Roquan and Jalen Johnson. And we can go on and Eddie Jackson. But it's, you know, it's it's accumulation of that talent developing, uh, you know, in your own system, uh, drafting well. And uh, you definitely saw it for that defense. But I think uh, I think we have a lot of that, too. Hey, Ryan, um, just a little bit about the coaching staff, because you don't know what guys are coming or going, and it's hard to anticipate that. When a coach like Petten comes on the market, do you have to react fast, or 
is this a process that you can linger on and, and think about what direction you want to go in? Yeah, you know, I think it's a balance, Tom. I think you, you do got to react fast. It's almost like I look at, you know, that, that phase when we hire coaches, almost like free agency, and sometimes even more so because they can be multipliers. And it's like, it's like acquiring a player within your division. You know a lot about them, you know, playing them twice a year. So we know a lot about Mike Pettin and have a ton of respect for him. And, and, and you know, Matt has a ton of respect for him. So when he became available, we, you know, we were able to act pretty quick, you know. And, but I think there's a balance, too, because you got to make sure – um, no different than the culture in your locker room. You know, we have a culture, you know, upstairs with our staff and you got to make sure it's a good fit. And, you know, Sean Desai was very involved. And, and I think when you get all those pieces together and everybody balances each other out and we all drop our egos and what's best for the team, I, I'm, we're excited to have him. So he, he's a really good addition. You can already feel it within the building. He's putting in a ton of reports right now in free agency. I was just, just reading a couple before we got on the phone and, you know, just his, his experience and his perspective on things is, is very valuable for us. You know, when you Jeff talked a little bit about where you guys would be if it was a normal NFL year, and, you know, you got some talent that's coming into the league that's a redshirt sophomore that's only played a couple of college games, and I don't know if this is a silly question or reality, a real question. When you go back and you try to look at as much information about these players – would you ever have to trace the steps all the way back to their senior year in high school because maybe you don't have enough of a guy playing a position at the college level, but he's eligible for the draft? Yeah, I don't think that's silly at all, Tom. Um, we, we do that. We go, we go all the way back, and we do that in, uh, in normal years, you know, just in, especially a lot of times for the character too. But, you know, it's hard. I mean, let's, if a guy opted out in the 2020 season and, you know, you're going all the way back to 2019. We talked about a guy the other day that was opted out, was injured in 19. So you're looking at 18 tape. Hmm. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult evaluation. Um, our area scouts are so valuable in this process because, you know, there are boots on the ground. They're the ones in the school. But information is, is harder to obtain uh, this year. It's unprecedented time. So we got to lean on our scouts. we got to lean on uh, different avenues to collect that information uh, and that's what we'll do. I, you know, you talk about the coaching staff bringing in a guy like Tom Herman uh, this week. Um, he has so much intel on these guys in college right now, and, and it goes all the way back to recruiting them. You know, being in their homes uh, recently. So it's there's a lot of different ways uh, we can use uh, different avenues to our advantage, and this is a year to maximize that. Ryan Pace, our guest, Bears General Manager, for a few more moments here on Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy. Building on that, your own experience and Ryan's experience, there, there's reasons why there's faith in both of you because of the types of people you are, what you've learned along the way as younger hires when you got your first big jobs here. Now in your seventh year, Matt entering his fourth is there a way also, I'm using that word leverage, to leverage all of that experience and how valuable is that? And where does that collective experience benefit every process that you go about in building what is going to be your 2021 team? Yeah, I think, you know, I think we both operate with a lot of humility and you learn from mistakes, you learn from experience and you just learn you know, as we go through this together. And I think we balance each other well and we lean on our staffs and I, the continuity, Jeff, that we have in the building with the, with the scouts and the coaches, I think it, it's really valuable and it's really come together. I, I felt it last, in last year's draft, and I think the success of last year's draft, when you looked at all those picks, um, it, it is a byproduct from that. So I feel really good about it, You know, all the experiences we've gone through. I feel like we're stronger than ever right now, and it just gives you a ton of confidence going into free agency this year that's going to be – Another unprecedented event with tons of players becoming available. A lot of guys are going to get cut, but I feel like we're ready for any direction it can go because of our experiences and our and our time on task together. Hey, Ryan, the, um, what you were able to experience from the interior of the offensive line last year when you got Sam Mustafer, James is going to come back. Cody had his strongest year, I think, ever. You still have Alex. You got Arlington Hambright. Does, does that uh, glut of talent give you a little bit of freedom on the interior of the offensive line maybe to concentrate on the outside because of the development of these guys that you really didn't know what expectations to put on them when you brought them here a couple of years, both as draft choices or free agents? Yeah, Tom, I love that question because we feel really good about the interior of our offensive line. And, you know, both Whitehair and, and James Daniels were second round picks for a reason. And, and they've really grown into their roles. And, you know, I thought 
you know, when we put Cody there at left guard, I thought he really settled in and, and played his best year of NFL football. And getting James back is going to be huge. You know how much upside he has, and he's been working his tail off. And then you can't say enough about Sam Mustafer. We're so lucky to have him and his leadership, his intelligence, um, his ability to calm everybody down. Um, it's, it's infectious. You know, he's the guy sprinting 20 yards downfield, picking up the ball carrier, you know, just – just leading the whole group, and it's so natural for him. And you go back and you look at his character at Notre Dame, and you know he was the leader of that uh, that uh, offensive line room at Notre Dame. And there was a lot of good players in that group, and he was the leader. And I think it's just that's very natural for him, and uh, he settled into that role very well. And I and I think it was infectious to the entire offense. Ryan, you alluded to the fact, and we'll let you go here in a moment. You alluded to the fact that the next couple of weeks, and maybe even the next month, could be crazy um i'm paraphrasing what you're saying can you kind of put into context what you think it will be like out there with teams cutting salaries or not salaries but cutting uh some of their assets because of the salary cap and and whatever else and maybe is this going to be an unprecedented uh glut of people out there that will create opportunities for some really smart decisions i I think so jeff i you know talking to agents around the league. And I think that everyone's expecting that. And, and we're prepared for that. You know, you had the guys that you know are going to be unrestricted free agents and we had those guys graded and we're ready, but there's a lot of, you're predicting who's going to get cut and who's going to be available. And we're grading those players and we just mix them in, you know, on the board and, you know, especially at the positions of need that we're focused on and, and what's realistic for us. And it's just working through that. But I, I think there's going to be some surprise cuts too. And, you know, we grade, a ton of players, you know, everybody's graded every, every year in the league and we got multiple reports. And I think having that many reports in the system um, and all hands on deck with our scouting department, our coaches is really going to allow us to maneuver and pivot as it happens this off season. Cause there's going to be a lot of that as these guys are getting released. And I think we got to be re- ready to react quickly and we will be. Ryan, we really appreciate it. Before I let you go, I know, um, Field Yates from ESPN listed all the adjusted salary cap numbers for all the teams. He says were released by the league. Did, did it create more room for you for for the Bears? Yeah, you know we we've kind of been operating under a couple of different scenarios, and you know we're, we're uh, we have a number in mind where we think it'll be, and you know we have a plan in place to make sure that uh, we can do what we we need to do with that number in mind. And you know I'm always very complimentary of Joey Lane and. There's a reason for that. We've been together for a long time, and he's really creative with how we do these things. And and I have a lot of confidence going into free agency with him by my side and and how we'll handle that. All right, Ryan, appreciate it so much for coming on. Uh, Hope to talk to you soon. You guys too. Thank you. That's Bears general manager Ryan Pace. We're going to step away for a break. This is Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy. And this segment of Bears All Access, also brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy. Visit athletico.com to request an appointment in clinic or virtually. Start feeling better tomorrow. Back with Tom after this on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. The Chicago Bears Network presents Inside the Bears, brought to you by Verizon. Anthony Adams and Lauren Screeden cover the world of Bears football on and off the field every Sunday night at 10.35 p.m. on Fox 32 Chicago or watch anytime at chicagobears.com or on the Bears official app. With Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. Welcome into the program. Our producers, Jordan Trudup, Dan Brilli, and in our score studios, Adam Stadzinski, helping us out along the way. Heard from Israel Donage and Ryan Pace tonight. Tom, some other news of the day today. Uh, is the process that, that we kind of alluded to with Ryan is there's going to be a bunch of names out there and some are starting uh, to to already get released. I'd hate to be a veteran this year, uh, but Ben Roethlisberger is and now will be back for an 18th year with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So another chip in that quarterback uh, bingo or whatever you want to call it. He's going to be in there for 2021, giving up some salary, going to make $14 million, which is a bargain for a starting quarterback. And he's made a, a lot in his career, but – and his he's positioning it as okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna give up a little so we can cr- clear some space to bring in some guys that can help us win a championship. Yeah, you know I, I don't feel sorry for Ben Roethlisberger for only getting paid 14 million dollars. He's made a lot of money, but is he is is he worth 14 million dollars? To me, I'm a little suspicious of Ben Roethlisberger's help. If I'm out there negotiating as a, as part of a negotiator for a professional football team. My first intentions is finding a guy for whatever I'm going to pay him that's going to make it through 16 games. 
Ben Roethlisberger, excuse me, Ben Roethlisberger, the last couple years is turned into a day-to-day operation. And it's it's unfortunate, and I know that you know he's put up on this um, Steelers pedestal or the pedestal of NFL quarterbacks. But you know, Jeff, just because he's telling me I'm willing to reduce my salary to that amount, it wouldn't be a foregone conclusion that he would be my quarterback. Yeah, but he did throw 33 touchdowns and just 10 interceptions last year, and won 12 and three in 15 games. So he did he did do a nice job. Right, he did. But you know, he's he's just recovered from elbow surgery. They didn't know how long, how much he was going to be able to play. So he has that same amount of uncertainty coming into the season as he did. And listen, I'm a, I, you know, hey, take a pay cut, congratulations. But I need to field a, a winning football team. So you you mentioned to me today, and we talked about the potential that 17 to 18 teams might might be having a different quarterback. It won't ultimately be that, but there there are. There are situations and scenarios that could happen. Uh, we already know Indy will have a new quarterback. Jacksonville is going to have a new quarterback. Washington will have a new quarterback. Detroit, the Rams for sure. Everything else now is just potential, depending on who goes where and why. Um, and you wanted me to, to throw that at you. What's your angle today on this whole quarterback carousel? I, I, I just think it's not going to be a great year for quarterback play. When you have that many teams in the league that are changing quarterbacks, what's the first thing every team says when they change quarterbacks is, hey, we need a process of getting this guy up to speed. Not everybody's going to be a Tom Brady because Tom Brady was a lot was allowed to include a lot of Tom Brady into Bruce Arians and that offense. Um, you know, Phillip Rivers did a nice job for Indianapolis. Ultimately, they fell show, short of their goal. And every goal of every team is to win the Super Bowl. But when you have that much turnover and then you have a new coach in Detroit with a new quarterback, you have a new uh you know, coach in Jacksonville, you're going to have a new quarterback. How is Joe Burrows going to recover from a knee surgery after he was having such a good rookie season? And are they going to fortify the offensive line so he can be protected? Because he's not going to be able to have a long sustaining career with the abuse that he took during the career last year. So I question the quarterback position going into this season because there is so much turnover, and that's not even counting the other pieces that are going to be missing from teams that are good with high salary guys. So I, I just so I'm that suspicious you, this year. Does that concern you even from a Bears perspective? Then, yeah. Be just okay. because, uh, listen, since I've been around the NFL, be, since I've been paying attention to the NFL as a young kid, every time a new quarterback has come aboard, they've always have a built-in waiting game. The only guy in the history is with no waiting game so far has is, is been Brady this year. That's Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak. And some more segment to go as we step away here. This is Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio 670 to score. Hey, everybody, back with you at the top of the hour. We're going to turn it over to our old pal, Hub Arkish. He'll entertain you tonight talking football and all things sports, maybe even a little Blackhawk talk. Blackhawks playing some good hockey big time. They take on the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning three out of the next four nights. You got the Bulls hitting the all-star break with uh, wins in six out of ten games. You got Cubs and Sox, baseball, cranking it up, but Bears football still dominates the headlines, man. That's the beauty about the National Football League, and that's what we're here to talk about. A couple of things. Uh, one, you know, Matt Nagy this week talked about how challenging it is going to be this offseason. We all know that, even from uh, our perspectives, to scout and analyze college talent in 2021. That's a big-time challenge in so many ways. It's, it's, it's definitely unprecedented. Uh, it's real. So now that, that just puts more of the onus on our personnel. It puts more of the onus on our uh, our, our coaches and uh, different phone calls that we got to make just to make sure, hey, what do you know about this? What do you know about that? Uh, and then, you know, just making sure that what you see on tape is real. And then you got some guys that don't have a lot of tape because of what went down. So without a doubt, this is unprecedented. Do you trust everything from tape, Tom, and, and go from there? Because you still have to know what, what, what makes a guy tick. And unfortunately, in this situation, you're not going to know until he's in your building, on your field, in pads, and ready to go. Right. I, you know, I would like to meet a guy face-to-face. I yeah. would like to talk to him eyeball-to-eyeball. If Again, if I was making a decision about someone that I was going to bring in as a high draft choice, 
I would love to go into a gym with him and either work out with them or watch them work out. That would tell me everything I knew. Because if you had to take a top talent guy and introduce him to 50-pound dumbbells, then you're telling me all I need to know about a guy. But if this guy walks me, if this guy walks me through a workout, uh, and I'm going to use J.J. Watt as an example because there's video of him working out uh, all the time. In that type of um, interest in the physical element that it takes in order to be a successful NFL player, if I had a guy that was in, was teaching me new things in the weight room, that would that would put him up at the top of the ladder. And then from your perspective, because, you know, as an offensive lineman, this is extremely valuable, is the intelligence of the game and understanding leverage and angles and what defenses are trying to do to you as an offensive lineman. How are you evaluating guys coming into the league in that regard? Just from watching tape. Could- well, that's what I'm saying. I, that's all I need is to, to watch tape because then you're going to be able to look at adjusted balance. Are they are they coordinated footwork? Do they understand the cadence that they're playing with and getting off the ball in a reality time where you're not laid off the ball and given the defensive lineman an advantage? Depending upon whatever position you're scouting, I think if you have a series of a few games on tape, you can – tell the story of the athleticism, the player's awareness, um, and the player's commitment to the detail. So are you finishing a block or are you avoiding a block? Are you getting in the way of an offensive player and finishing the tackle or are you trying to bounce off of him and strip the ball instead of tackling? Are you looking for work, Tom? Are you looking for work? Exactly. That's what I like. You brought that up a lot last year, and it is something that I pay attention to with that phrase, that phrase you know, in my mind. That's what I'm excited about. Guys. That's what I'm excited to cut you off, but that, that's what I'm excited about with James Daniels, uh, a healthy James Daniels. And he he was looking for work last year, and that kind of mentality and nastiness is exactly what is needed on that offensive line, uh, for any offensive line, not not the Bears' offensive line, and not that I'm saying it was missing. I'm just saying I want those types of guys. But that's what I. That's why I asked Ryan Pace there. You got a lot of talent in the interior of that line, and it may give you a little bit of freedom to move guys around, maybe to offer guys out there that have starting ability already. And you know it. So you're not moving Cody Whitehair out of left guard as as well as he played last year, in the strength that he displayed and just how well he played. And Alex did a really nice job yeah. at right guard. So the competitiveness of that interior position, because to me, I'm sticking with Sam Mustafer. Are you are you hoping the Bears draft an offensive lineman? At some if point, if they draft an listen, you know, there's a there's something I had written down, and um, it was about because I see all these reports and they're predicting offensive linemen. Um, I want I don't I don't want versatility I want reliability so don't give me a guard tackle tweener that their position is undecided I want a tackle I want an offensive tackle a guy that's bred to play that position he's got the size he's got the measurables he's got the understanding don't say I'm hiring this offensive tackle and if he fails I can move him to guard I have enough of those guys I need a guy that is a dominant offensive tackle by trait and training Line of scrimmage is where it's all at, big time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Enjoy the sun there in Maui. Stay safe. Thanks to everybody out there, including Jordan Treadup, Dan Brilli, Adam Stadzinski, along with Israel Dadanajay and Bears general manager Ryan Pace. We're out of time. Hub Arkish next. Thanks for listening, everybody. This is Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. Good night.